So right now, rescuers are really racing to find the missing dive vessel that is somewhere in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. A race against time, very clearly, as the oxygen supply on board dwindles. Officials say that the sub, which is about the size of a minivan, it went missing about an hour and 45 minutes into its descent after it had launched on Sunday. It was on course to see the remains of the Titanic at the bottom of the, uh, the North Atlantic Ocean, all part of an eight-day journey conducted and led by Ocean Gate Expeditions. Several agencies are now involved in the search. That includes the U.S. Coast Guard, the Royal Canadian Air Force. The search covers a remote area, a vast area of 900 miles east of Cape Cod. Now, one of the most challenging parts of this search operation is the depth, of course. The world record for scuba diving is only to a depth of about 1,000 feet. Once you hit 3,200 feet, light is no longer visible. 2,000 feet further at 5,200 feet, most animals can't survive. Now, sperm whales can dive deeper than any other mammal. They can only get down to 10,000 feet. 12,000 feet is about the average depth of the ocean floor. The Titanic is still below that. The wreckage settled at 12,450 feet, which is 2.4 miles below the surface. You can truly get a sense of just how challenging this is now. Seeing as Jason Carroll is back with me following this search operation from Boston. You were talking about you were talking about this with me last time. The depth is the problem. The clock is what is against them. What does the search operation look like then today, Jason? Okay, good question. And just a short while ago, we got an update uh, from the U.S. Coast Guard here in Boston, who's helping in terms of heading up this operation. Uh, they say that the Canadian aircraft P3, P3 Aurora arrived on the scene out there. Again, we're talking about 900 miles due east of where we are right now. Uh, that particular uh, aircraft is going to be able to conduct sonar searches. The ships, the Polar Prince and the RV Deep Energy, they say, are continuing uh, their searches on the surface. The search, the search area now that they've conducted so far, if you can imagine this, Kate, they now say is 10,000 square miles, a massive area, a remote area. At this point, again, uh, the concern is about the amount of oxygen that is left for the people who are on board. We're told at this point it could be anywhere from about 54 to 80 hours of oxygen left. Uh, a massive search effort underway. As you said, the U.S. Coast Guard involved, the U.S. Navy involved as well. Canadian Coast Guard and Canadian Armed Forces also lending a hand. Earlier this morning on CNN This Morning, the head of the U.S. Coast Guard here in Boston talked about what they're doing in terms of searching and how it's now not, not not just on the surface, but has now moved below the surface as well. Uh, a lot of the search to date has been primarily focused on the surface of the water uh, and uh, our aircraft flew uh, patterns uh, in combination with uh, Canadian aircraft and, and New York Air National Guard uh, aircraft flew patterns uh, that roughly about the size of uh, the state of Connecticut. But today we uh, now have uh, underwater uh, search capability on scene and so we're going to be using that uh, to uh, see if we can locate uh, the submersible in, in, the, in the water. And according to OceanGate, Kate, there is an early warning system that's on board that's supposed to alert the pilot when something goes wrong so the pilot can then take action. And, of course, there's also some sort of system in place that's supposed to help the vessel rise to the surface when something goes wrong. But, again, at this point, we simply don't know what went wrong. Kate? That, that is exactly right. And the poor families, we have to remember, that are just waiting. And it's the wait. J Jason, thank you so much. And it's the wait, John, that is so hard for all of these. And things. it's the scale. And you've been on one of these missions flying over vast the New Zealand areas Air of Force, it, The New Zealand Air Force, based out, we were based out of Perth, and I joined them for the search of MH370. And it's remarkable to be up there and to see what looking for a needle in a haystack from way above. It's amazing. Really difficult. All right. Of the five people on board, four have now been identified. Hamish Harding is a British billionaire businessman and adventurer. He has descended to the deepest point on Earth, the Mariana Trench. Traveled on board the, the Blue Origin rocket and he circumnavigated the Earth in 2019. His friend told CNN his experience could be an asset in an emergency situation. 
He will be calm and collected. He will work through the emergency procedures together with the crew. He, also, he is also an experienced submersible pilot from going down to the Mariana Trench with Victor Ruskovo. So he will be a valuable asset to the crew and helping motivate the crew as well if morale is low. Paul-Henri Nogelet is a French expert diver and Titanic researcher who has visited the wreck site more than 35 times. He is also the director of underwater research at a company that owns the rights to the Titanic wreck. Shazada Daoud and his son Suleiman Daoud are also on board. Both are from Pakistan but live in the United Kingdom. Shazada Daoud is a trustee of the SETI Institute, a research organization in California. He's also the vice chair of one of the largest companies in Pakistan, the Engro Corporation. We're still waiting to learn the identity of the pilot of the vessel. Okay. CNN's own Gabe Cohen has also been inside this very submersible when it was about to launch about five years ago. He joins us now. This is above the surface now, obviously, but it's below the surface, if you will, Gabe. You were a reporter in Seattle when <clears throat> you were able to get inside you, um, when, when, within this very sub submersible that is now missing. What does it feel like to be inside, even above the surface? Yes, yeah, so Kate, I did several stories on Ocean Gate during my time in Seattle. In 2018, I did this story about a Titan, the submersible that's now missing. We went to Ocean Gate, we talked to the crew, and we actually sat inside the vessel. And you ask, you know, what it felt like. I was really struck during that time uh, with how, one, how simple the technology seemed. It's this tiny vessel. It is very cramped. It can fit five people, uh, which we understand is a number of people uh, currently lost as part of this expedition. It's operated uh, by a gaming controller, actually driven with what looks like a PlayStation controller. And yet the company, OceanGate, uh, told me they were extremely confident that they could safely make this remarkable journey to the Titanic, that they could dive 13,000 feet and handle 150 million pounds of pressure at the ocean's floor. And, and the company's CEO Stockton Rush, he told me that the pressure vessel uh, and its carbon fiber structure uh, of Titan, that, that sub, that it could handle the pressure no problem, that they had not cut corners or costs when it came to safety. And frankly, in all my interviews, uh, every one of the Ocean Gate crew members, team members that we spoke with talked about safety, safety and how confident they were in that technology. Now, having said that, Kate, we understand that Titan has had some communication issues in the past, that the vessel was lost uh, for more than two hours during an expedition last year because they couldn't receive messages from their support crew uh, on the surface. Um, you know, they use, they rely on text messages when they're underwater. There's no GPS down there. So again, we don't know what exactly went wrong, but we do know uh, that they got their final contact, made their final contact uh, less than two hours into this expedition. And there are still so many questions um, surrounding all of this, surrounding uh, what happened, what went wrong, and, and where things stand now, including I've heard some folks raise this question, if, if, if the vessel is capable of sending out a distress signal um, in the event of, you know, ever losing communications, like we obviously see here, have seen here, what more are you learning about that? Well, that is a major question that we're trying to get to the bottom of. Uh, the Coast Guard and Ocean Gate, neither of them have said whether or not there is any sort of emergency beacon or tool in place on board Titan uh, that could alert uh, first responders or folks on, on the surface of the ocean, their support crew, uh, as to where they are. We have been asking. We are trying to get those answers, Kate. But at this point, it's not clear what tools are in place. Yeah. It's still remarkable <clears throat> this, as this search now continues. Gabe, it's good to have you. Good to have your perspective as always. Thank you so much, John.